Taking a look at the usage statistics from before, you might now say that voice assistants are only useful for home use, but not for a business. Is that true? In general, understanding our voice is now a standard in business meetings. The default Microsoft Teams can do a real-time transcription of meetings. This not only reduces note-taking, it also makes meetings more inclusive to people who otherwise have difficulties understanding or speak a different language. These transcripts go even further also starting to identify speakers even in a shared meeting room or automatically creating tasks in your calendar based on the things you have decided in a meeting. A common fear is that all the voice recognition happens in the cloud. So your spoken data is sent to some server in the cloud. I often hear people saying that it's the business model of those companies to record everything you say and sell the data. Is that true? Well, if you think about it, most things you say to a smart speaker are simple things like listening to music or setting a reminder in 10 minutes. Is Google really interested in receiving those simple sentences from millions of people every day? After all, they have to pay for the internet traffic and for analyzing your spoken words on their servers. Additionally, if you want to provide a good user experience, the recognition should be fast. Sending the sentence, turn the lights on, to an Amazon server in the cloud Processing it, sending it back to Alexa, so that this can finally communicate with a local light in your room takes a few seconds. That's physics. But if you want to turn on the lights, it should happen instantly. And that's only possible if your smart speaker does the voice processing locally. Therefore, many smart speakers are already capable of processing at least the standard queries locally. They no longer need to send those to the cloud. More powerful devices like smartphones can even do a complete voice recognition offline. Google requires a neural network that's only around 80 megabytes in size to do that. This allows dictating text or creating live subtitles and transcripts for videos that you watch. So what are the requirements of smart speakers? These can be very, very small if you would like to bring the costs down to bring voice recognition everywhere. If you decide to offload processing to the cloud, the Internet of Things version of Alexa requires less than one megabyte of RAM memory. This allows making simple and cheap devices like coffee machines affordable and still controllable by voice. An Echo device typically has at least 50 megabytes of RAM. So it's a trade-off between price and power of the voice assistant versus speed and convenience of offline speech processing. Apart from the technical background of where the voice is processed, there's also the question of how to integrate smart speakers into a business setting. The default Echo devices are meant for end consumers. They are linked to your personal Amazon account. However, Amazon also has a service called Alexa for Business. This allows to centrally manage Alexa devices like the ID does for, with your laptops. You can pre-install skills and also use skills that are private to your company and not available in the public stores. Examples are skills that help in meetings, from controlling your office space, or something entirely related to the specific business you are running. An example could be a health service skill in hospitals for either your employees or for your patients. You can even go further and integrate voice assistance into your own product. If you are, for example, working on a device for medical rehabilitation and you want to recognize voice, you usually don't have the resources to spend millions on voice research like the big tech companies already did. Thankfully, it's easier than that. You can get device kits for different scenarios, which allow you to build on technology like Alexa and integrate it directly into your products. Just to show you that this can go even further, uh, with Alexa Custom Assistant, you can have a custom branded voice assistant while still using the core Alexa technology. This is, for example, useful in a car where you want to have a voice interface that can control the radio, inform you about the remaining gas, or open the windows. As a car manufacturer, you want your voice assistant to sound like your brand and not like Amazon's Alexa. So technically and organizationally, it's possible to integrate voice assistants into a business. What could be some example scenarios for voice assistants? Industrial field workers or health institutions can use speech assistants to organize and document work. Often, you don't or you can't carry your papers with you all the time when working with patients and need to measure vital data. You can also use it to schedule visits. Going further into the future, it's also possible 
to integrate voice assistance with smart glasses so that you don't only hear the info, but you also see the data.